Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel again. Yesterday was release day for Ubuntu 24 and its flavors. And in this video, we're going to have a look at Kubuntu 24. So let's get going. So put it up now from the ISO. By the way, the link to the ISO is in the video description below. And so let's start Kubuntu here by just hitting the first option. And again, I see there is a file system check here which is new also in Ubuntu 20.04. And so we get the choice here to try Kubuntu or install Kubuntu. Let's go ahead and install it right away. So let's click on install Kubuntu here. And I'm going to choose my layout for the keyboard as I don't have a US keyboard here. So let me just quickly select that and click continue. Now I'm going to go with the normal installation here. You could also choose to go with the minimal installation if you prefer that. And I'm going to also leave the download updates while installing Kubuntu checked on. And I'm going to also check the installed third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. And I recommend you also you do this, especially if you have an NVIDIA card or Wi-Fi which requires specific drivers. And then click continue. Now as an installation type here, I'm going to choose to use the entire disk. You have also the option here to use the entire disk and set up the LVM, the logical volume management, or you can also do the same thing with encryption. So in this case, I'm going to go with the entire disk here and my disk is already selected and then I just click install now. Now it's going to show me the changes that it's going to do on my disk and this is fine. So I'll just click continue. And here I can select my time zone, which is right now correct. So I'll just click continue here. And now I can create a new user. So I'll type in my name. And my username is fine. I'll just pick my password here. And I'll call my computer Kubuntu LTS. And I want to require my password to login. So I'll let this checked on and click continue. So now we just have to wait until the installation finished. And I'll be back when it's done. So the installation is complete and now we can reboot the machine. So I'll click restart now and I'll meet you back in a second on the desktop. So we are now on the KDE desktop and the first thing I'd like to do is to check the info tab. So let's go here to the programs menu and type in info and hit enter. So we have Plasma version 5.18.4, which is the latest one. This is nice to have. It offers some improvements also in performance. And we are on kernel 5.4. Of course, this is the same kernel as Ubuntu 20.04 and it's the LTS version. So let's close this up and see what's new in the applications here. Let's go under application and let's go under internet. We see now Firefox. This is version 75. It is now standard in Kubuntu 20.04. And another thing which is standard, it's actually Thunderbird, which is replacing Kmail as an email client. This is also due to the fact that Kubuntu 2004 doesn't offer anymore the KDE PIM suite of applications like Kmail, Korganizer, although you can still download them from the Discover Software Center if you wish to do so. Let's go back to the applications here and let's have a look at the Office suite. And let's open up LibreOffice here. And let's go to the Help menu and About LibreOffice. Here we have version 6.4.2.2. It's not the latest version, but it belongs to the 6.4 line of LibreOffice, which is going to be supported throughout Kubuntu 2004 lifespan. So we can close this up and close also LibreOffice. Let's have a look again at other programs. Let's go under applications here. Let's go, for example, to multimedia. And we see here we have already VLC installed. This is nice to have. And Elisa in Kubuntu 2004 is also replacing Kantara and it's now the default music player. And let's have another look at other software here. Let's go to graphics. We have Gwenview here as an image viewer and also Ocular for PDFs. And we have also Scanlight already installed. This is for scanning documents, which is nice to have. And let's go back one more time. And going back to internet here, we have also KDE Connect here. So let's click on this shortly. So KDE Connect is useful, especially if you have an Android phone. And it's very useful because you can receive your phone notification on your desktop computer and reply also to messages. You can control music. You can use your phone also as a remote control. So if you never try this and you have an Android phone, definitely give it a go. And it's nice to have it here in KDE already installed. So let's close this up. So every KDE software in Kubuntu 24 belongs to the 19.12.3 release service, 
which is quite stable. And having used also Kubuntu 24 for the last couple of days, I have to say it was very stable, especially if you're working with applications like Kden Live, which is not coming installed by default, by the way. It's very nice to use. It's very snappy, performance is very good, and it's very stable. So let's go back one more time to the programs menu here and go to applications. And let's go to system. And so Kubuntu 24 also includes the startup disk creator. This allows you basically to download a Ubuntu or Kubuntu ISO and burn it to a USB stick and make it bootable. It works normally only with Kubuntu or Ubuntu images, but there is a hack also to make it work with other images, for example, like with Arch Linux, by changing the ISO extension with the IMG extension. It's a little tweak, but it's useful to know if you want to do that. Beside the Discover Software Center, also we have here the Muon Package Manager. Some people prefer to use this, and its interface is fairly similar to the Synaptic Package Manager. So let me go full screen here. So as you can see, it's very similar to Synaptic. And we can search, for example, for a package here. Let's search for Chromium. And as you can see, we have the Chromium browser here. And notice that it says Chromium Snap. This follows the same trend as Ubuntu 24. In Kubuntu 24, many of these applications will be installed using Snap. And as in Ubuntu 24, Canonical is moving more and more towards Snaps, more than installing packages via APT. However, if we go to the terminal right now, let's pull up our console here and increase the font size. We can still type in sudo apt-get update to update our packages, enter our sudo password, and also to upgrade our packages by typing in upgrade. The app manager is still there, and if you want to install some packages also with that, you can do this, of course, as well. So let's close the terminal up. So one thing you have to keep in mind with Kubuntu 24, if you're using Kubuntu 18.04, you will not be able to upgrade directly from Kubuntu 18.04 via the terminal, at least until Kubuntu 20.04.1 is released in July. So you can find the Kubuntu 24 images online, you can install it with that, but you will not be able to upgrade from 18.04 to 20.04 until the next release is done in July. Just to keep this in mind. So overall, this is a quick review of Kubuntu 24. Because I work a lot with Kden Live and also many other KDE applications, I really like its stability and its snappy performance. And if you like the KDE desktop environment, definitely try it out and let me know what you think about it. So there you go, guys. This is my review and my take on Kubuntu 24. There are not many new features and there are not many visual new features, but there are a lot of improvements, and especially under the hood, which make the experience on Kubuntu 24 very nice. I definitely recommend you to give it a try if you like the KDE desktop environment and let me know what you think about it. Thank you so much for watching the video guys, I hope you liked it and if you did please hit the like button below and subs to the channel if you haven't already, subs always helps us out and if you want to support the channel you can visit our Patreon website or you can donate through PayPal via the website as well. Thank you so much again for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one.